The next P I want to talk about is the problem. The problem that admissions departments face in the college admissions process. Because the college admissions department is doing something to your application. They're putting you in the yes stack, meaning you got in. The no stack, meaning they're going to feed you to their pet goat. Or the maybe stack, which is the just stack they have to make decisions about and they have to draw people from based on some more subjective things that you may not be aware of. Really competitive colleges have a lot more maybes than less competitive colleges. A college that accepts 50% of their students, for instance, may be able to make a decision on your grades and test scores alone. Whereas a college who accepts 10% of their students, even the 4.0 perfect SAT score student may still get cut. And a lot of people know who those people are and they think it's crazy they got cut out of their class. Because in December and in January, the applications start coming in. And they're all from you. The bright-eyed, bushy-tailed high school graduate-to-be that's ready to take on the world. And you should be, because that's what your role right now is. So those applications are allocated fairly quickly to the college admissions counselor, or sometimes they have readers or other staff members who help go through these processes. But mostly, it's in the hands of the college admissions counselor. And his or her job is to start going through these applications and making recommendations to the dean or making decisions on behalf of the dean on which students get in, which students become goat fodder, and which students go into the maybe stack. At first, the job is quite easy. They use a computer, they do some analysis, they run some models, they look at the test scores, look at the grades, they look at some factors that they're able to sort of hang their hat on and rank order students by. But the next part isn't so easy. Once they get past those sort of yes stacks, they gotta start making decisions, more subjective decisions, which means they have to read your application. In my book, and even now, I don't recommend anybody assume that your application is gonna get read. It probably will. But always assume your application is not going to get read, and you're going to be much better off. Like I say, most colleges read just about every application that comes to the door. But don't assume that, because you may be one that's so far down on that no stack, on the maybe stack, towards the no's, that they're not even going to bother once they get to their group of students they want. The problem this guy's facing is he's sitting there reading his essay, or reading an application from the captain of the soccer team who's bragging about soccer and what a great influence soccer was on his life and how team sports are so wonderful. And you may be that soccer player and you may be a great person, but there are 26,494 high schools in the United States. That means there are 26,494 soccer captains in the United States today for varsity and there's another group for junior varsity and second varsity and second junior varsity or whatever it happens to be. Lots of people playing soccer. This also means there are 26,494 presidents of the photography team. And there are 26,494 valedictorians. And there are 26,494 biology clubs. And there are 26,494 chess clubs. All these people doing all these things they think are so unique and so special and so important. And they're just one of many, 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 many students that are doing this every day. So what we find is that you might be thinking, oh, but my interests are so intriguing. What I want to be when I grow up is so important. But you know what? There are a million people who want to be engineers. There are a million people who want to be doctors. There are a million people who want to go into real estate. There are a million people who want to solve the world's problems. You appear to be just like every other student on that person's desk. Because there are millions of people out there who want to save the world. And that may be real. And that may be you. And that may be important to you. That may be what makes you so special. But you've got to remember there's a million other kids or more that are just as special as you and just as unique as you. You are the most unique person among a million people who are also just as unique as you. So this is about how do you be someone that's not going to get lost in the shuffle. Because this is a very frustrating problem for the admissions counselor. Because while you're bragging about how great soccer is, there's a whole bunch of other kids talking about the same one. Sooner or later, it looks like everybody is interested in soccer. And there's soccer essays and sports essays, and he's reading the same thing over and over again. And you just begin to look just like everybody else. Drones, a crowd of people, sea of sameness. This gives this guy a big headache. This is a big, important problem for him. How does he differentiate one student from the other student? The more he looks at it, the more people look just the same. And the more he thinks about it, his head starts throbbing. He's crazy. He's angry. What is going on? How come I can't find somebody unique, he's thinking. And the more he thinks about it, the more frustrating this is. Because he digs deeper, he tries to find uniqueness, differences, variety, something interesting that he can say, this person deserves to get taken out of the maybe stack and put into the yes stack because they're not like everybody else. 
because if I don't find that thing, I'm just throwing darts, and that's not my job because I'm a professional, and I'm good at it, and I want to succeed. But everything he looks at looks exactly the same as the next one. This drives him absolutely crazy. But one day, something happens. He's going crazy, he's staying up late, and he finds something, something unique, something special, something that popped up on his radar that said, this person is different. And he takes a little closer look, and sure enough, there's a person out there that's different than the other people. And he's going to take a closer look and say, yes, absolutely, there's a person there that's different than everybody else. And he's going to take special note of that, because guess what just happened? He just got himself a bona fide reason to take you out of that maybe stack and put you into the yes stack and be the hero. Because when he focuses on who you are, he's going to say yes to you. And you're going to have a good day that day, because you are the one that did it. You got out of that maybe stack into the yes stack, and now you're in that college. And his dean is going to go, yeah, you were the man, because you did the job the way I wanted you to do the job. And he's going to hand you the keys to your future, and you're going to sit down and have a toast with this guy because you did something special for him, made his life easier, made your life easier, solved the problems for the whole industry, and then he's going to start all over again with the next application. And you're going to be the talk of the town because you were this average student that no one really cared about that just got into a great competitive college. And the college admissions counselor is going to go home, he's going to take a nap, resting soundly because he did his job. And his job is a very important one. It's to bring onto the campus intelligent students that can handle the work, but also, and almost as importantly, to bring a variety of students from a variety of backgrounds with a variety of ideas. This diversity, this variety, is something that colleges desperately want. And when they do this, when they find this, when they can achieve this, they've met their goals.